We want to turn to the latest on Britain's exit from the European Union. Uh, big story here and big impact. British Prime Minister Theresa May is vowing to see this Brexit plan through until the bitter end. Difficult and sometimes uncomfortable decisions have had to be made. I understand fully that there are some who are unhappy with those compromises. But this deal delivers what people voted for, and it is in the national interest. If we do not move forward with that agreement, nobody can know for sure the consequences that will follow. This comes as at least six ministers resigned from their posts yesterday from the government, two of which were top Brexit officials. Joining us right now is former member of Britain's parliament and Euro-Pacific Capital senior economic consultant, John Brown. John, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for weighing in. Good morning, Maria. Your reaction, I guess, first to Theresa May's plan and, and, and what we're hearing from her in the face of obvious upset uh, with some of her colleagues saying, I'm not, I'm not going to deal with this anymore, and they resigned yesterday. Yes, they certainly did. I think she's lost a total of 12 over the last two or three weeks from the Cabinet and various ministers. Uh, like many, many people, in fact, probably the majority of people in Britain who voted for Brexit, feel this complete betrayal of the expressed, clearly expressed wish of the British people and the pressure exerted by the European Union that some are now in England calling the Euro-Soviet. You saw three instances in the last week of, of the power of the European Union or Soviet over leaders of democratic countries. First of all, Macron's extremely rude insults to President Trump and saying that uh, nationalism trumped over and destroyed patriotism. Then you get uh, Chancellor Merkel saying the birth of a European army. And now you've got uh, Prime Minister May with her complete betrayal and misleading statements uh, that you've just heard just now uh, against Brexit. Right. So what, what are you saying? I mean, th this betrayal, uh, do you think it's still going to go through? Are you saying that this is alienating the United States? What's your point of bringing up Macron and Merkel along with this betrayal from Theresa May? Well, basically to show the power of the European Soviet over nationally elected leaders. But as far as May is concerned, she's upset almost all sides of the House, including Remainers, or Ramoners as they're called, because they feel we're going to still be in within the European Union, but with no seat on the board. So she's upset so many factions that I think Jacob Rees-Mogg has tabled a letter to call for a vote of confidence or reselection of the Prime Minister. And my hope is that in the next week at the 1922 committee, she will be called and there will be a reselection called, and it will take about two weeks to get uh, rid of her and replace her with someone else. Wow. One just hopes that Conservative members of Parliament have the courage uh, that is lacking on those that remain in the Cabinet and are patriotic enough to stick up for the British people and their clearly expressed wish to get out of the Euro-Soviet. Uh, Lord Brown, um, this is Michael Block here. So Mr. Rees-Mogg leading the charge... John Brown, actually. Uh, very good. <laughs> okay, so um, Mr. Rees-Mogg is leading the charge for the Tories here. Are you concerned that they have to, we have to be careful what they wish for here? Do the Tories risk throwing the country to the other side here? Uh, you know, what, what is your view on that? Is that, is that a concern for you? Well, it would if it triggered a, a general election, but the Prime Minister cannot call a general election if she's deselected. And the deselection takes place within the Conservative backbench members of Parliament. They vote for their leader, and if they vote her out, there will be a new leader of the Conservative Party, hopefully, who's going to honour Brexit, and uh, there would not be a general election. So there's no need to throw it to the opposition and Corbyn. Uh, if the Conservatives act within their rules and have courage to do it. Uh, but, but what about what the CEO of Rolls-Royce said? Uh, y this was uh, Warren East, says that Theresa May's Brexit deal is better than no deal, right? I mean, he, th he's relying on imports of thousands of car parts, looking for certainty in, in terms of the economy there. And he says, look, let's just get this done. One deal is better than no deal. I totally disagree. He is the chairman of a very large company, and most large companies love the European Union because of the ease of traffic and things like that, and the motor car business in particular. But the small businesses are virtually unrepresented 
uh, by the big power block of the Confederation of British Industries, and they provide 60% of the employment in the country. So the vast number of people in Great Britain will suffer considerably by remaining in the Euro-Soviet, which encroaches completely. It's called the Soviet because it's so similar to Russia. They elect a parliament but give it no power. Their governing body is an, an appointed, not an elected commission, just like the Politburo. And they're out to crush nations, including the United Kingdom. Do and one has to just wait and see. It'll have a big impact upon whether Italy is the next to leave. Good the morning. result, if they don't punish Britain enough. Do, do you think this deal can be fixed? Is there any, uh, if we get a new conservative leader, do you expect them to try to shape the deal a little differently? Or do you, are you looking for a hard Brexit? Is that your choice? Well, a hard Brexit is not the best, but it's the second best. And if you can't, if the European Soviet is not prepared to negotiate, which they haven't now, they've just laid down a whole lot of rules, and Prime Minister May has just lain back and accepted it, it would be better to have a negotiated deal, of course. But the second best and the one looming is a hard exit. And that is a great benefit to Britain. At the moment, Britain can have favoured trade within the European Union. But that is only 20% of world trade. So Britain would be free to carve trade agreements with America, Canada, Japan, China, which it's now prevented from doing, because all the European Union uh, trade agreements are geared to the Franco-German interests and not to Great Britain, in which the financial centre is the most important contributor to, to national GDP. And those are discriminated against. John, do you need to see Theresa May leave or in order to have clarity? What's going to give us some more clarity on this situation over the near term? The, the, the decision of the backbench or the, the Conservative members of Parliament whether to get rid of May as soon as possible within the next two weeks as their leader and elect another leader, and hopefully one who would be actually pro-Brexit and patriotic enough to obey the clearly expressed wishes of yeah. the British people. Real quick, who do you want that to be? I would favour uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg or maybe Boris Johnson, but I'm afraid I'm not close enough to those inner workings today, private deals within okay. the, uh, the Conservative Party to know who other contenders might John be. John Brown, great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for your thank, insights. Thank you very much, Maria. It's a great pleasure.